Hi third graders, my name is Shelby and I'm from Partnership for Kids. Thank you so much for being at school today. It is so important to be at school when you're healthy and you're not sick. Um, a way that you can stay healthy, healthy so you can keep coming to school is just washing your hands. It's something that is so easy for us to do. It'll keep ourselves healthy and others healthy as well. Um, so washing your hands after you go to the bathroom, um, after you sneeze, after you blow your nose, and before and after you eat. After you eat. Um, this will just keep you healthy enough to come to school and keep learning. So our topic today is perseverance. And to persevere means to work, continue to work hard even when something gets difficult or hard. Um, and it's okay to ask others for help when you are in a difficult situation. It's okay to ask your teacher, parent, guardian, friend, anyone. It is totally okay to ask for help. So a time that I persevered um, in a difficult situation, I was taking a math class. And I'm not good at math at all. Um, so I was having a really hard time. I was getting some bad grades at homework and I was really, really worried about my grade and I had a test coming up that I was really worried about because I was not understanding it at all. So I went to my teacher and I told her, I basically told her like, I'm not understanding it. I really need some help. And she helped me with some problems. And then she, I also got a tutor and my tutor worked with me on some, on the subject and uh, we worked on practice problems together. She would check my homework after I finished it to make sure that I was understanding it. And if I did get a problem wrong, we would go over why it was wrong and how I should do it correctly. And she would work with me until I finally got the right answer. Um, and then I got the test came and I did really well on it. And I was really proud of myself because I was actually understanding it now. And I was very, very proud of it. So I asked for help um, when I was persevering and it was okay. It's I just I felt so much better asking for help because if I wouldn't have asked for help, I probably wouldn't have gotten the good grade. So our book today is called You Should Meet the Woman Who Launched the Computer Age and it's by Lori Kalkoven. And I'm only going to read the first three chapters, um, but you will receive a copy of the book if you have not gotten a copy already. And um, you can read the rest um, on your own with a friend, with someone in your house. Okay, so the world before computers. Where, where would we be without computers? Today a computer can fit into your pocket or even on your wrist. You can watch a video or get the answers to a question in seconds. That's because computers run programs, list of instructions that tell them what to do. Programs tell computers how to do everything from searching the internet to giving directions to playing games. But just like the physical computer had to be invented, so did the language of programming. This is the story of one of the very first computers and the people who programmed it. The United States Army built a computer called ENIAC to help, us, to help the U.S. fight against its enemies in World War II. ENIAC stands for Electronic Numeral Integrator and Computer. ENIAC was the very first computer that could do more than one type of mathematical equation at a time. Depending on how information flowed through the computer, it could give the answers to many different, really difficult math problems. In one second, ENIAC could execute 5,000 additions, 357 multiplications, and 38 divisions. The ENIAC engineers knew they had built an amazing machine, but getting, to, getting it to do what they wanted was another challenge. They didn't know it yet, but what they needed were computer programs and computer programmers, a group of smart women who were chosen to make ENIAC work. They had to figure out how to make the information flow through the computers to get the answers they wanted. In short, they were the very first computer programmers. You should meet the woman who helped launch the computer age. You should meet the woman who programmed ENIAC. Chapter 1, World at War. In the early 1940s, the world was at war. Almost every country in the world took part in World War II. The United States, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, China, and other countries were on one side of the war. They were called the Allies. Germany, Japan, and the countries that supported them, the Axis power, were on the other side. The war between the Allied countries and the Axis power lasted for many years. The United States military used complicated weapons to fight the war. Their weapons had to be set just right so that missiles would land in exactly the right spot once they were fired. Setting the weapons required a lot of mathematical calculations. With the help of adding machines, it took a human being 30 to 40 hours to do the math for each target. 
Adding machines could do only one calculation at a time, and thousands of calculations had to be done. The army needed lots of people who were good at math to do these problems. They called these mathematicians computers. So when somebody said, we need a computer to do this job, they were referring to a person and not a machine. With men away fighting the war overseas, the military hired women to, do, to be mathematicians. The military put out an ad for female math majors in colleges around the country to come to Philadelphia to be computers. At that time, most women who had college degrees in mathematics became teachers. Other mathematics jobs in science or research usually went to men. Being a computer was an interesting and new opportunity for women who were good at math. Chapter 2. Meet the Human Computers Jean Jennings grew up on a farm in Missouri. She was a star pitcher as a child. She was the only girl on her soft school softball team. She majored in math in college, but teaching wasn't for her. She wanted to see the world and have adventures. When Jean read that the military needed math majors, she applied for the job. When she got it, she hopped on a train to Philadelphia. Kay McNulty was born in Ireland. She moved to the United States with her family when she was three. At college, Kay became friends with another math major, Frances Bylas. When Kay saw the ad for math majors, she called Frances. Together, Kay and Frances went on a job interview, and one week later, they were hired. Ruth Lichterman was from New York City. She studied mathematics at Hunter College. Like the others, she wanted to help the United States win the war, so she went to Philadelphia to be a human computer. Betty Snyder was from Philadelphia. She went to college to major in math. One of her college professors, like many other people at the time, believed mathematics was something only men should study. Betty decided to change her major to journalism, but she still loved math. When the Army needed human computers, she signed up. Marilyn Westcoff never took a mathematics class in college, but she was extremely smart and knew how to, do, how to use an adding machine. So she was hired to be a computer too. Marilyn got math lessons on the job. This was wonderful, strange, difficult, and exciting, she said. While these women were calculating how to set weapons, they had no idea what they were going to be asked to do next. Chapter 3, Top Secret by this time, World War II had been going on for many years. Everyone wanted it to end. The military thought that doing calculations faster might help them win the war. Engineers John W. Mockley and John Presper Eckert Jr. built a high-speed general-use computer to do calculations in seconds, not hours. That computer was ENIAC. A general-use computer is one that, given the correct application, should be able to perform most common computing tasks. ENIAC was enormous, 8 feet high and 80 feet long. It took up a whole room. It had more than 6,000 switches and almost 18,000 vacuum tubes. If it was used correctly, ENIAC could do long, hard math problems in seconds. ENIAC was a thousand times faster than the human computers and adding machines that came before it. But to solve a math problem, ENIAC had to be told how to solve it. That meant that all of its cables and switches had to be arranged in a specific pattern. Each problem required the cables to be set in a different sequence, and no one knew ahead of time what those patterns were. The military turned, its, turned to its human computers for help. Jean Jennings, Kay McNulty, Francis Bylas, Ruth Lichterman, Betty Snyder, and Marilyn Westcoff were chosen to work on this new project. They were going to make ENIAC work. The women were told ENIAC was top secret. They couldn't even tell their parents that they were working on it. The women worked together, lived together, and ate together while they were being trained to work on ENIAC. It was a good thing they all got along and became friends. We had a wonderful time with each other, Jean said.
After six weeks of training, the women were left alone to figure out how ENIAC worked. The engineers helped them when they could, but they had moved on to other projects. The women discovered that if they put a cable in a certain place, ENIAC would do one thing, and if they put the cable in a different place, it would do another. There were no books they could read, no classes to teach them. They had to figure it out on the job. Then they had to make ENIAC do math. First, they broke down long, complicated math problems into simple steps. Then they made charts and diagrams for each step. Then they used their charts to set up, one, to, to set up the steps on ENIAC. They moved cables and flip switches to make the machine perform the steps. By setting up the cables in the right pattern, they were programming the computer. If, pro if programmed just right, ENIAC would solve the math problem correctly and fast. There were thousands of cables and switches to arrange. The women realized that they could save time by reusing steps that of one program and another. They were getting better at programming. The women soon knew more about ENIAC than the men who had designed it. They programmed the computer to do a series of top secret math problems for the military. On September 2, 1945, World War II officially ended. The United States and other Allied powers had won without the help of ENIAC, but it was still an important invention. It remained a secret until February 1946, when the Army and the men who had designed the computer decided it was time to show it to the world. They gave the women a specific math problem they wanted them to program ENIAC to solve. The women had two weeks to create the new program. After all the time and money that had gone into creating this computer, ENIAC had to succeed in its first public showing. It was up to it was all up to these six women. Okay, so and then the rest, you'll be able to read the, the other three chapters on your own. Um, so the main characters of our story were the six women who worked on the ENIAC uh, program. So um, go ahead and pause the video and answer what difficulty did the main characters face and then unpause when you're finished sharing, please. Okay, thank you to, for those of you who shared. Um, so the main problems that the characters faced was that they had to uh, program ENIAC correctly and work on it to make it so that the program knew how to solve the math problems so they could win the war. And then we did find out that the war was won um, before ENIAC was finished, but they still are able to use ENIAC and it was still an important invention um, for the military. Um, so, did the, do you think that the main characters relied on others to help solve the problem? Go ahead and share, and then unpause when you're finished sharing. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, I would say that the characters relied on each other a lot. Um, the six women, they worked together. It said they ate together, they lived together, um, they worked on it together, they were always working on it together. So I would say that they relied on each other a lot um, to get ENIAC working. <clears throat> so how did the main characters solve their problem? Go ahead and pause, and then unpause when you're finished sharing how the main characters solve their problem. All right, thanks for sharing. So as of right now, I would say that just, they haven't really um, finished ENIAC, but they said that they've gotten it up and running. They know more about it than the engineers who designed it, um, just because they were always working on it. They were always practicing with it. They were always looking on how they can improve it. And I would say that that's how they're um, solving their problem. And if you read further, you will see um, eventually how they um, completely solve their problem. Okay, so our last question for this is, if you find something difficult, how can you persevere? How can you push through that? Go ahead and pause and then share. Unpause when you're finished, please. Uh, 
Okay, thank you for those of you who shared. I'm sure you all had some amazing ideas. Um, for persevering, you can always ask somebody for help. Um, maybe practicing a lot is one way that you're going to persevere. My way of persevering through my math class was I asked for help and I worked really hard on my homework. I was doing practice problems with my tutor. I told a teacher. Um, but thank you so much, third graders, for being at school today, for reading our book with me, um, and for doing our discussion questions with me. Have a great rest of your day.